This is the entry to the vessel. We come up on the swim platforms, which are two metres long. Very handy to have, very easy to, to board with dinghies and to dive off. A guest barbecue here, which also doubles as, a, as an oven. The engine rooms are aft, through this hatch here, either side. They're quite spacious. What we have here is the NAF S3 fire system. We go forward from there, we have, this is the, the uh, solenoid bank for the hydraulic winches. We go across further, we have the hydraulic pump, which is like, drops down into the hydraulic tank there itself. It builds manifold to each compartment, 40 millimeter pump, it's all to, to New South Wales waterway survey. We have the main engine here, the starboard side's a Nissan FD35, marinized. Duplex fuel filters, Raycor filters, and also a final filter on the engine itself. Behind here we have the 15 kVA generators, one each side. That's a Kubota engine on a 15 kVA Stanford alternator. They've been very, very successful, done a very good job. Hydraulic steering further back and the control valve for the steering itself. And we have stowage, which are in drawers tucked up on the inside of the tunnel there. This is our cockpit here. Now as I step out over a 300 millimeter high combing, that just stops, prevents any in, uh, internal flooding in the event the boat gets pooped. That's built to New South Wales Waterway Survey. Here we have a a hand sink just to clean yourself up before you go inside, touching the instruments. Under the wheelhouse floor is where we keep or we keep a spare tools, fishing gear, and also where all the electrical goods are installed. We have the main battery bank here, 24 volt, two banks of 24 volt gel batteries. We've got two 60 amp woods chargers under here, one for each bank of batteries, the 240 volt quick recovery hot water service. We have a inverter here, SE32 uh, inverter, and we have an isolation transformer here, which allows you to go into a 110 volt power marina and put the power through and bring out 240 the other side. Also in here is the hydraulic pump for the automatic pilot, battery isolation switches, uh, power points, standby battery charger, and all the other paraphernalia that you need to uh, operate a boat in isolation. Here we have a locker, carries a number of life jackets and also uh, plates and picnic gear etc. Okay, here we have um, a gas bottle storage external from inside two 40 kilo gas bottles, have a life ring with a line, we have foam extinguisher here and the uh, element you can crush it here. Also this here is a control mechanism for the hydraulic winches. We have two spare winches in and out for all the winches. Okay down the half down the boat we've got a couple of rod holders here where we do a bit of fishing and sometimes get lucky. Uh, we also have a duck board down here where we do all our cleaning of fish. The dinghy here is a 4.2 mil meter um, aluminium dinghy made specifically for the boat. The three mil aluminium with a double bottom checker plate, uh, alloy seats and a 15 horsepower Yamaha outboard. The boat's heavy for a normal uh, tender but it's, it's very robust, it's very uh, rugged, it um, can be dropped on rocks uh, etc. <clears throat> There's two anchors on the vessel, both 70 kilo uh, CQR anchors. This hatch gives access to from the anchors, or even secure. This comes down. There's a chain on one side, 110 metres of 12 millimetre high tensile chain. On the other side, there's 10 metre chain tail with 120 metres of 24 millimetre nylon rope. The anchor winch is a Muir Thor 24 volt electric winch, very good unit. And when we anchor up, we put on a bridle to uh, uh, stabilise the vessel under anchor. The rig was designed and built by Dave Lamborn Yacht Rigging in Brisbane. He designed the rig and installed the rig on, on the vessel. You can see the rig has got uh, a retractable spinnaker pole on the forward end here. The furler on the headsail is a Furlex 500S and the furler on the staysail is a, a Furlex 400S. The halyard winch on the main 
my sail is a, me a mechanical winch, as is the uh, as a reefing winch on the port side of the mast. The furlers go, filling ropes go one either side back to the, uh, the after end of the vessel to uh, be filled using the power winch, the hydraulic winches at the back there. The rig is 22 metres above the, the house top, a very substantial section and uh, over designed for a long blue water cruising. In conjunction with uh, Dave Lamborn, Gary Saxby uh, made the sails for us, Gary Saxby from Brisbane. As I said, the headsail's 62 square metres, the staysail's 32. The main is 92 square metres, the spinnaker is 205 square metres. Uh, the material is hydronet of the sails and the spinnaker I think is 4 ounce. This is more of Dave Lamborn's handiwork, the mast itself. We have the um, main halyard winch here, which is on a two part tackle. That's a manual winch. On the other side we have the reefing, where we reef the, uh, the main from. The main has got a fully battened, harken batten system. The deck gear is harken. The tracks, the um, cars are all harken. Either side, there's two tracks for each headsail on either side of the vessel, so we can sort of set the sails quite um, accurately to get the best out of the best performance out of them. There's a full watertight bulkhead in front of that the starboard cabin, either side, port down starboard cabins, and uh, on the starboard side we've got the dive store. Another watertight bulkhead. Then we have a storage place where we keep the dive tanks. We'll just go through the dive compartment here. It's full depth. So we've got um, six complete sets of gear with um, numerous spares. There's uh, the octopus here and the regulators. Here we have the Bauer Junior compressor, 240 volt. It's been a very good unit. It's probably done about 200, 300 hours maximum. Below that is a three cylinder Clisby compressor, which uh, is for hooker driving, also for it'll supply air to uh, paint the vessel. BCDs, weight belts. Face mask, snorkels, fins, all the paraphernalia that you need to go diving. On the port side, we've got the compartment where we have the water maker, and forward of that, we have the where we sew the spinnaker. The water maker is 240 volt. It's a Sharpliff unit made in Cairns, Australia. It produces two litres a minute. This is the filtration unit. The water comes up through the filters, 10 micron, one micron fill, then down into the high pressure pump. This valve. It is the port tank of the sub tank. This is the wheelhouse, as you can see. Good conning position. We sit inside, nice comfortable chair. All the instrument navigation instruments are an immediate sight. <clears throat> the radar here, echo sounder here with all repeated information from the GPS. A GPS navigator here. We have the logic wind instruments here. And this is our automatic pilot. Uh, main compass here, ship's compass there. We have instrumentation for both port and starboard main engines. We have the fire system over there. And again, we have the throttle controls, throttle and gear controls, and the two instrument panels, one for each generator. We have um, the two VHF radios here. We've got a handheld VHF radio there. And behind me here, we have the, <coughs> the ICOM HF radio fitted with the mail, sail mail also. <clears throat> this is our Sony Vio laptop fitted with the uh, CMAP Wells charts. And here, of course, we have the age old um, uh, Clevia screen. Excellent unit, works very well, particularly when it's, when it's needed at night time when it's, uh, it's very, very wet and very rainy. This is an occasional berth that we use sometimes along passage when the two of us on board. Uh, Lynn's on the wheel, I might sleep there for a catnap there for a while, and vice versa, she might be there if I want some company in a long passage. From the occasional on berth we move across to the main sail controls. This is the main sheet winch and the traveller winch is either side of that. The traveller is through the window here behind us. After the traveller <clears throat> there are two kayaks, Hobie kayaks. There's one Maui, one Pursuit. Above and beyond the kayaks there's a uh, frame there which houses uh, 24 volt and 12 volt solar panels and a few aerials. Outboard of that frame there are two RFD eight-man inflatable life rafts. Coming down from the wheelhouse into the main passageway from the cockpit of the saloon. On the starboard side we have a shower and toilet located here. This uh, works very well, isolates the uh, deck usage from the en suites in the cabins. Further on we have the uh, <coughs> panic bag 
the 406 EPIRB. Have our fishing rod stowed up here. A couple of occasional mattresses which go on deck when sleeping outside at night time, whatever. Uh, we also have here the 220 litre 24 volt freezer which has uh, given us very good service over time. Moving from the freezer on into the galley, the first thing we come past is a 375 litre 24 volt fridge. Adjacent to the fridge, there's a number of the plate storages in here. This is storage for food locker. Further over we have storage in here for the um, electrical appliances, rice cooker, blenders, etc. with power points internally. The other coffee, tea, galley equipment, knives, forks, cutlery is located here. Here we got the broad water four burner top and uh, uh, gas oven. It serves very well. We have a microwave there, Panasonic. Uh, moving across, we've got power points below there. We've got a double bowl sink here. Uh, up here we have the uh, glass storage for our wine and champagne and uh, spirits glasses. When we're at sea we normally put a towel up on there which stops any movement of the glasses. And they all arrive secure and intact so that uh, after the first anchorage we can enjoy a glass of wine with the sundown. Moving further over we have a settee which doubles as occasional berth here. My lovely lady Lynn sitting on there. And from that position also from the galley and internally here we have excellent visibility to uh, forward and to either side uh, so that in crowded waterways we have um, excellent visibility and obvious safety from that factor. You should look underneath the headstall from inside here so there's no blind spots at all from the ship. Moving forward from the galley to the main saloon we have <coughs> the television set over here then sitting at the dining table which takes eight to ten people. Underneath the dining table we have a storage area where we keep our DVDs and videos and Lynn's showing us the storage space under the settee, which is double depth and goes throughout the whole um, length of the settee. Here we have the entertainment system, which is a tape and CD players supported by Bose speakers in the, in the saloon. Also, there's identical Bose speakers in the cockpit, which can be isolated. We go down the passageway to the starboard hull. The layout is very similar. The port and starboard. The starboard side, we have a cabin down here, which has an ensuite. Up forward we have a cabin which has a vanity unit and here we have the uh, support mechanism to make it beautiful which is a fold and ironing board here and we have wardrobes in here in here this is a bending washer dryer it works extremely well uses very little water this is a laundry tub here underneath here we have additional storage for laundry powders um, we keep our paper towels there for the kitchen also have toilet paper and all those other spares we use all the time Adjacent, we have additional storage here for towels, sheets, and other uh, necessary goods. This is a starboard aft cabin, which is identical to the port side cabin, showing the, the double berth, the shower and toilet, and also there's a vanity unit behind the door there. There's wardrobes here, and also another wardrobe in here, which is adequate storage. And there's also storage under the bunk for more clothing, etc. Going down to the port hull, the area between the cabins, this side is, is uh, we have our office space as opposed to the laundry other side. Here we have filing cabinets, we have our storage space here for our station equipment, storage up there for our files, other equipment. Be through the door there is the port side cabin forum which is identical to the cabin on the, the starboard side. And under here we have further storage and here we store our uh, photographic equipment. And I'm just going into the cabin here on the port aft side, which is identical to the starboard side. Here we have a vanity unit. The storage space is two wardrobes in this cabin. And on the, all the hatches on the vessel, we have these magnetic uh, screens which keep out most of the mosquitoes. It's always the odd one that sort of manages to find its way in.